Hey everyone, it's Raj from 3CB Performance. Real Madrid's 23-year-old forward Marco Asensio suffered a left knee anterior cruciate ligament ACL rupture and lateral meniscus damage in the 58th minute of the team's International Champions Cup preseason game against Arsenal. The injury is a stark reminder of how quickly fortunes can change in professional football, as just six minutes earlier, he scored clinically to level the game at 2-2. The injury occurred when Asensio planted his left leg while defensively jostling with Arsenal striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. At that point, Marco's ACL, which is a key stabilizer of the knee joint, took on a level of stress it couldn't handle and tore completely, ruptured. Additionally, he suffered damage to his lateral outer meniscus, a force dampening, friction reducing tissue that sits between the femur, thigh bone, and tibia, shin bone, which is commonly damaged in conjunction with an ACL rupture. Asensio's mechanism of injury, planting the leg while being exposed to an external spontaneous perturbation on a different part of the body, in this case, decelerating while PEA tried to leverage him off the ball is common in ACL rupture. The deceleration directly stresses the ACL and the perturbation highly stresses the neuromuscular system, which is responsible for unconscious instantaneous feedback between the body and mind that results in micro adjustments and muscle activations to help stabilize the knee and keep it in a safe position. Further, the neuromuscular system along with muscular strength and endurance, muscles are the body's main shock absorbers, often take time to gradually ramp up throughout preseason training, preseason games, and into the regular season. That ramp up time leads to increased risk in the interim, and it's part of the reason why injury rates spike during the preseason and early season. The most telling example of that is American football, which over the past five years of preseason training and preseason games has averaged over 20 non-contact ACL ruptures. To that point, one of the key tenets of rehab for ACL ruptures is quote, reactionary neuromuscular training or RNT for short. And when you intentionally apply spontaneous forces to the knee to beef up neuromuscular control. First things first, Asensio will have surgery to reconstruct his ruptured left ACL. After the surgery, Marco is now in the rehab phase with an average return timetable of seven to nine months. That means he could return in late February, but I would caution against it for three key reasons. Emerging research on earlier return to play protocols, for example, Abil Fakir rehabbed and returned in six months from his ACL rupture is showing a higher risk for re-injury to the ACL and increased rate of knee cartilage wear. If Asensio does return late into the season, he'll potentially be dropped into higher intensity situations as match competitiveness and intensity tend to ramp up the later you get into a season. That not only makes it tougher for him to acclimate gradually, but further, the research shows that as the level of competition and intensity increases, so does the risk for injury. As a young professional footballer with his career ahead of him, 
the risk reward of coming back to play this season tilts more towards risk. Every player wants to get back on the pitch as quickly as possible because that's what they love to do. But Monaco taking the extra couple months in summer to get as close to 100% as possible would help him mitigate his short and long-term risks. Speaking of risks, there are numerous inherent risks after an ACL rupture. The research shows about a 3% chance of re-rupturing the ACL, an increased risk for rupturing the contralateral other knee ACL, and higher risk for other lower body injuries on the injured or non-injured side. The latter two are likely due to compensation as stronger body regions will take on more load to make up for injured or recovering body regions. Additionally, there's an increased risk for higher wear and tear on the knee cartilage, potentially leading to earlier development of mild arthritis in the knee and associated symptoms of discomfort and pain. However, that's far more common in traumatic ACL ruptures that involve a direct blow to the knee, whereas Asensio's was a non-contact mechanism of injury. The really good news for Marco and Real Madrid is that ACL, surgical techniques, and rehab have come a long, long ways partially because ACL ruptures are so common nowadays, resulting in a huge sample size. That's resulted in increasingly excellent outcomes after ACL repair, with higher chances of quickly returning to pre-injury levels of performance. All in all, obviously the injury is a setback for Asensio, who was in the midst of trying to find his foothold with the club, but with the right mindset of viewing the injury as a new challenge and patience with the rehab process, he very well could be back in the fold at a similar level by early next season. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. My goal is to provide you with in-depth, evidence-based, narrative-free analysis. You can always find me on IG and Twitter at 3CB Performance. Make sure to sub to the channel for the latest updates. 3CB out.